Ah, here we see the elusive cylinder, most princely among all curvy linear geometric solids and shapes stuck somewhere between the rectangular prism and the sphere. Sometimes it stands noble and tall and other times squat and short, but always round and flat on the top and the bottom. And so I got my paints out and propped it up on the table and began to decorate it in a way that I saw fit at the time. And surely sometimes I felt unsure of myself and what I was doing and how it was turning out. And I feel like I could have safely blamed the poor way this art piece was turning out on, on this type of paint that I had never used before and this type of shape I had never painted on before and the scale at which I hadn't painted at before and the location I hadn't painted in before and this certain day and this certain day of the year I had never painted on before. And the list goes on and on of excuses I could use as to why the, the painting, the art, may or may not be working out just specifically how I had envisioned or how I wanted, but I would, I would never use any of those excuses. You just have to embrace it. So I tried to embrace it and got a little bit of paint on me and kept on moving forward. And sometimes I thought I moved forward for too long and thought I should have stopped long ago and I had put, and maybe I had put too much paint on there, but who's really to say? So let me give you a little bit of the background, the story behind these barrels I'm painting on. There was a dry cleaner who, I'm not sure of the intricacies, the ins and outs, all the moving parts of a dry cleaning business, but apparently Dry cleaning is called that because you don't you you use chemicals, right, for it, for the dry cleaning. It, I don't know. Look it up on Wikipedia. And these chemicals from time to time come in these large barrels. And um I guess you collect, you tend to collect them depending on what you do with them. If you threw them away, I think they would probably fill up one barrel would probably fill up your whole trash can. So you can collect them. And every now and then, a passing artist will see them and wonder what the deal is with those barrels and come and ask you and uh, ask if you can paint on them. And so here I am painting on them. I used Montana 94 spray paints, which are pretty nice spray paints. I think that's what they're called, MTN 94. I think the MTN stands for Montana. I'm not sure. Maybe it stands for Mountain because that is a pretty common abbreviation for Mountain. I think it stands for Montana. They're pretty expensive. Before, when I was toying around with spray painting, I was using very cheap, just very cheap spray paints from like Walmart or something. But I sprung, I spent the big bucks on some actual nice like spray paints intended for street art and stuff like that. And it kind of hurt me. You, you might notice here in one of these barrels, I, I, <laughs> I used quite a bit of white spray paint on an already white area of the barrel, which I'm still kind of flip-flopping on whether or not that was a great idea. I think it was because the barrel was actually an off-white. But now that, now that, now that can of white paint, which is fairly expensive, is almost empty. And I, I used it for, a, for a dubious purpose, which I could have got away with not using. Anyways, I think it's pretty easy to go buy more just cans of white paint. I might buy a, like a white and a black, just like those basic colors, which are uh, more common to use. In, in like every painting because I have plenty of the other colors still I don't want to buy because I bought like a 12 pack a 12 pack of these paints was like a hundred and something dollars like 110 or something so they're pretty crazy it's pretty crazy and I bought some custom spray caps which were really good uh it like narrows down the spray widens it up I was pretty 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 pleased with it and I would recommend it to anyone if you're I mean, I still don't really know what I'm getting into. There's all sorts of different spray paints when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm a newbie doobie. I'm an, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm enjoying it. And I, I wore a, a face, a respirator this time to protect my poor, my poor tender lungs. I did wear uh, like a face, like a, like an eye mask. What's it called? Goggles over my 
eyes and glasses at first, but it was fogging up too much. I have that problem with goggles a lot. Do I have sweaty, steamy eyes or something? Almost within like a minute of every time I put that thing on, the inside of those goggles would just be totally steamed over and fogged up, and I just couldn't see out of it or through it. So I just took that crap off and tried to squint really hard and so I wouldn't get any paint particles on my eyeballs. And then for some of the line work here, I was using, at one point, some crink pens. They're big markers that are actually like bottle markers, but mostly for the fine lines there, I was using Posca pens, which are some of my favorite paint pens any, out of anything. You can use them on anything, for anything. I mean, sometimes I use them to draw on myself, on, on other pieces of artwork I do, and here on these barrels. They work great, they do. Very happy with those. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>